Hi. Hello. <laughs> we are live. We are live and we have a different setup today. Yeah, we're just testing some stuff out. We got lights going on in the back. Look at that thing. That thing is pulsing away. We got cotton candy. We're talking about harmonious today. Yeah. So we thought it might be fun to like actually have lights going on. Yeah. So um, I'm going to take a second and just listen in. Okay. Make sure we are good. Yeah. Oh, we have to talk. It's yeah. otherwise I can't really hear. Yep, that's what you got to do. You got to check the other side too. We're testing out some the new microphones and stuff, so we got to make sure we're good to go here. Yeah, I think I think it's good. Okay. We're good to go. I don't have my glasses. I feel like I have a problem. Do you anyway. feel like you have a problem? I can't see the chat or anything. Can I watch it from here? There you go, Donna's in. Hi. Hi, Donna. Okay. Great. Okay, so I need to make a little bit of an adjustment. I feel like you guys can't hear me very well. We're, we're bobbing and weaving. Yeah, we're learning. So, um, okay, so today we're talking about Harmonious. The new Epcot Spectacular Evening Show. It flips. I know. <sighs> I didn't even move. They're difficult, man. They're difficult. I feel like, can you guys hear me well? I feel like you might not be able to hear me very well. Yeah. I don't know what's up with that. Can they not hear you well at all? Not as well as they can hear me. Or not as well as they can hear you. Well, that might be a problem. But anyway, I'll just talk a little bit louder. There you go. Hopefully that'll solve the problem. Donna can, can hear. hear? Us. Okay, great. So if you can hear, I think we're good. So, sorry for that little bit of a bumpy start, but hi. <laughs> hear you very well. Great, great. Awesome. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of look down here to see you guys talking to us. Um, so that's what we're looking at. I know that sometimes people don't like when you look off screen, but you guys are actually sitting pretty far away. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I feel about it. It's tough. I, I don't have my glasses on. Put your glasses on. Yeah, but then you can't see my face. Look what happens with my face. Look, 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 look. Ah. It's not so bad. It's horrible. I look like I have Cyclops eyes. <laughs> 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 you know I'm, I'm doing live just like this. I am not moving. They're going to stay perfect, right? Right. Hold on. Right there. All right, I'm doing the whole live like this. Okay. <laughs> it's like a weekend at Bernie's. That is free. <laughs> I don't know if I like that. Exactly. So, so today we were talking about Harmonious. Who Harmonious. We actually just watched the show. <laughs> I can read the comments now. <laughs> we actually just watched Harmonious um, together prior to <sighs> coming on to chat with you guys. Yeah. Because we wanted to kind of, I don't know, get back up with it. <laughs> yeah, because we watched it when we debuted mm -hmm. on, on live with Disney. And yep. then we, uh, obviously you recently went yeah. and got to experience it firsthand. I did. Yep. So um, we wanted to like kind of catch back up and just kind of collect our thoughts. Um, so I have that firsthand experience and, and Russ just has the video. But I'm going to say something right off the bat. Um, the video, which we've linked down below. It's not my video. It's a video from another channel who does a phenomenal job captioning, capturing the fireworks. Um, yeah, they do a great job. It's beautiful. That is actually better than watching it live. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah, they had, well, well we're going to get into it. Yeah. So, Let's talk. I have my notes here, as I so often do. Let's talk a little bit about Harmonious what exactly it is and uh, why we have it. Um, so Harmonious is the new nighttime spectacular over at Epcot. Um, 
I think it, its predecessor was, like its official predecessor that it took the place of was Illuminations, Reflections of Earth. Correct. Which had been in place since the Millennium Celebration. <laughs> so. So 2000. Yeah. So it was. 2001, it technically. It was a long time. What, no, a, not 2001. Like it was, it went in for the. Oh, it went in for the Millennium Celebration. Oh, my yeah. apologies. Okay, we. I I do not know Epcot like she does. So I'm taking the back seat here. I'm just yeah, hanging so out. It's, it's been like 20 years, and um, Disney was like, let's let's replace it with something new, and they announced that it was going to be this like bigger than life show, um, very exciting, something new and fresh, and. Um, I think a lot of us, especially people who were big Illuminations fans. I seen Illuminations live and I loved that show. I think a lot of us were like, oh no, <laughs> we're going to lose our show. <laughs> Disney fans don't like change, right? Um, but as it turns out, um, it was okay that we lost the show. Well... We all thought it might be okay that we lost the show because we got this, like, interim show called Epcot Forever. And, oh, my goodness, this show was... I know it wasn't anything, like, super spectacular, but I thought it was amazing. I love that show. It, like, pulled on your heartstrings because it was a collection of... I didn't link it below, but I suppose I, I should have. Um, it was, like, a collection of songs from Epcot that they all put together and it really tugged it tugged on the heartstrings of every every Epcot fan. Yeah, I, I, I have to admit, um, I'm not I love Epcot. I, I love the park. I love the idea of the design, the whole the whole getup. I don't know it very well. I don't have the attachment mm -hmm. that clearly all of you have. <laughs> because I I didn't experience it. Yeah. Um, but I enjoyed it through you. And realizing that it was like the original songs that we've always, that you know that you've told me and shown yeah. me and we've watched the video, old videos on and stuff, um, it was phenomenal. Yeah, and then so the reason I even bring this up is because at the very end, the show kind of closed out with a whole new world from Aladdin. Yeah, and Epcot fans cringed. Um, <laughs> There we was like, so oh, much backlash. No. <laughs> oh no. And I think that that was the first sign that things might get questionable with Harmonious. So, and this is what I don't understand right off the bat is, we'll, you know, we'll get to it, but if your fans are communicating that something was a bad idea and it was horrible, yet everything else was phenomenal. Maybe you shouldn't do it again. Look, I think we're we're not going to talk about this topic specifically today, but I think it's important to note. Um, I don't think Disney has been taking cues from fans at all in no. the past like few years, at least. Um, and this was kind of like the the beginning of it. So I mean, well, the beginning of it in reference to Harmonious. Sure. So anyway, we knew we were going to get a new show. And um, we like there were going to be these massive fountains or something. Like I, I don't think anyone was really sure what exactly it was going to be at the beginning. But we saw these like pictures, and it was amazing. And then when you went to Disney, we went to Disney in 2019, and we saw these like fantastical um, in the Epcot Experience where they have like this preview center, if you will. Um, we saw this like fantastical preview of what Harmonious was going to be, and it was like, oh my goodness! Like we're losing reflections of Earth, but but we are going like this is going to be amazing. Yeah, and if you haven't seen Reflections of Earth, one of the one of the staple pieces that I recall, and I think everyone agrees with, is the Earth, is the globe. The, the globe sorry, the globe um, barge that f came out. Did its it thing. Fun. It did its thing. When it was it beautiful when yeah. it worked, and it went away. Yeah. 
And so if you come out with even something half as good as that with newer technology, it's going to be great. And that's what I thought. When I saw it, I was like, that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to follow suit. Yeah. They're going to swap out some of the tech on it for the newer stuff, you know, and but that's we'll be not good. what happened. We eventually found out, and, like, the timeline, which we will go over a timeline, but, like, there was the timeline um, was, as it went on, it was like, well, there's going to be five barges. Well, they're going to be permanent in World Showcase. Well, they're going to be six stories tall. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it seemed to be like, well, it was a little crazy. We didn't really know what exactly we were getting um, until we did. And when we did, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, um, so real quick, let's just talk about the, the premise of the show. Mm -hmm. So the show is in Epcot. It's in World Showcase or the um, World Showcase Lagoon. So the water that is that the countries are around. Yeah, the World Showcase. You know that whole area. So it is themed to like the whole idea of the show is it's using music to draw people together from different cultures and different backgrounds, and kind of make everyone feel included through the Disney music. Very specifically through Disney music. Not through the country's music. Not through... Well, the way that it turns into the country's music is because it's... It's, um... <laughs> being sung in the languages of the countries that the movies take place in. Yeah. Okay. So, automatically, this was not a win. <laughs> People were not happy with this right off the bat. But... Uh, before we go any further, I want to say, even though I'm a huge fan of Illuminations, and I love and miss Illuminations, I don't have any problem with a new show. It's no. been 20 years. It's time for a new show. Yeah. Um, sure. My problems come a little bit later um, in the development of the new show, but we'll get to that. Um, I know a lot of people were skeptical of the IP, um, the intellectual property or Disney characters and music in this show. I wasn't really that skeptical of that. I mean, I think Epcot's its own thing, but like I was like, ah, if they do it right, it'll be all right. So, and that's the thing, my, the Epcot that I know doesn't have essentially Disney characters in it outside of like Figment's a Disney character, obviously, mm -hmm. but like you don't have a lot of like Mickey Mouse and, you know, well, you don't that's have. That's not entirely true. Like, even from the very beginning, Mickey was there at Epcot. No, but what I'm saying though is like it's not like thrown in your face, it's not mm -hmm. plastered on the walls. Like, there's obviously like sh uh, the, the shop and stuff like that for uh, what the heck's the shop now? Now it's the Creations the shop. The Creations shop. It used shop. to be. Um, it used to be mouse gear. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, the, the little subtleties of characters that is Disney mm -hmm. is fine. It never bothered me. But, like, Epcot was, in fact, its own thing. Mm -hmm. It was technology. It was the Earth. It was the future. It was everything that wasn't Disney. Yeah. It's literally how and I took it. And it's like, hey, this is Disney. You just, you, but I ugh. also think that, like... Like, it can work out just fine, because I feel like even though, like, Epcot isn't, Epcot isn't Disney, but Disney is the world. Right. So I think it's okay. Like, it, I, I understand it's kind of in the weeds, but anyway. So, there are three separate sections to the show. I didn't write them down, and the reason for that is this. Look, there is, like, a whole, like, outline of what happens in the show according to Disney. None of that is comprehensive. There is no, like, real beginning, middle, and end of this show. So there's no story. There's no story here. Yeah. Which is huge, um, considering, I would say, most of the time, there's a story and it's not or a premise. A loose, so as a theater person, like, mm -hmm. spent a lot of time doing that stuff, um, this isn't even, like, a loose, artsy, fartsy type story. There's music. You come together. That's it. Like, that's the... Oh. the but we'll get into the yep. potential feelings on the story later. Okay, so let's talk about the main differences. Um, so the main difference with Harmonious compared to um, Illuminations, Reflections of Earth, is the barges. So the show takes place using five barges. There are, I believe, 
there are fireworks barges. There's probably technically more, but we're not going to count those because, like, the, can't even see them. You, you can't see those, and if you can't see them, they don't exist, as far as I'm concerned. But these barges, these five barges that to make up harmonious, whoo! There are four of what we like to call the taco barges. Yep. They are big black taco half eggs. Shape. Yeah, it's, it's like, like the it, silhouette of if you cut an egg in half, it's the silhouette yeah. of half an egg on the water. Yeah, um, but the only thing is, I like to call it a taco, is because the shape of it is like a, one of those right. those hard taco shells. Choco tacos. Choco tacos. So there choco are four tacos. choco tacos. Four choco tacos. Um, those are delicious. Not by the way. name brand. In <laughs> World Showcase Lagoon, and they're situated. So where this is situated is like. Oh, forget it. Don't even worry about it. We're going to get into it. Um, and then there's one ring barge, sometimes referred to as the Stargate, because that's it, what it looks like. <laughs> straight up. It looks like a portal to another dimension. Um, and without trying to make fun of these things, because it's too easy. Like, it's really low-hanging fruit. But the, yeah. the whole thing looks very industrial. It looks very um, oil rig or um, like scaffolding that you would use for a concert. Like if you ever go into a rock concert and you see all the like those like big black poles with the beams and the crosses, that's what this stuff is made out of. Naturally, it makes sense that that's the case, but like that's what this is made out of. So I would say the ring in particular. Especially. Especially the ring. Now when it comes to the taco barges, it's a little bit different and depends on where you're looking at them from. Um, but they're big, they are big screens. Right. And so they look like big black screens. That just block your view of everything. Just, that's where they, that's what they look like. Yep. So um, the four, of course, are on the outside. The um, center one is in the middle. And I think it's six stories tall. Well, so, whether or not it is actually six stories tall, you can see it from the boardwalk. Yes. <laughs> so it's big. And the big thing about this, if you're like picky like I am, is that the way that it's situated doesn't really line up. I don't know where they, they decided to plop these down. I don't know why they decided to plop them down where they are. Because if you look head on through the barge, it's not centered with... The America Pavilion. And if you're coming the other direction, your American Pavilion, you're looking head on through the barge at Spaceship Earth, it's not centered with Spaceship Earth. Like it's off no. to the side. Yeah. So there's no like aesthetically. It was, totally makes sense. Like it doesn't I mean maybe there's like some sort of piping or something underneath, <laughs> like they're pumping Disney magic straight up into it from a very specific pipe and they didn't want to reroute the pipe. I don't know what the deal is, but like it's not all I, think, all I think of is, you know, uh, arranging furniture and, like, kitty-cornering things. and It's kind of like what yeah. we're doing right now. Like, if, if you're watching this, you're seeing, like, the paintings behind us aren't, like, centered with us because we have more furniture and stuff. But, if it, like, this is exactly it. Like, if it bothers you yeah. that we're not centered with those paintings behind us, imagine that you're in a theme park. And the big, like, metal scaffolding structure yeah. is off-center. Yeah. Uh, Donna says, uh, maybe it's the depth of water. Very well, maybe. Water mains, depth of water, who knows? I, it's definitely not maybe. because it looks right. Yeah, no. That's I for have, sure. I have no idea. I would find it hard to believe that it has anything to do with the depth of the water, though, like, personally. Because, like, it's it's not off by, like let's say, 100 yards. It's off by, like, 30 feet. I don't know. Like it, like, it literally just has to shift, like, a few feet. They ran out of pipe. Yeah, like, it, it's like, a, it feels like a, a budget cut. Anyway, um, so on these, on these barges, the tacos have screens, and they have these, like, arms that, like, they can adjust articulating arms they walk like an egyptian these arms yeah and, and screens can... on both sides and those arms and everything have fountains on them mm -hmm. they have pyrotechnic can like cannons as yep. well 
and they have lasers. Does it's a killing guy, machine. <laughs> it's a, yes, this is like really close to like doomsday um, <laughs> survival. It's scenario. a Swiss Army knife barge. Um, the center barge has all of those things except for the screens. Instead, the center barge uses like waterfall, like what they call a waterfall screen. So they drop water through the center barge and then they project onto it an image. Yeah, and if you've ever seen Fantasmic, they use it a lot there. Yeah, it's similar to Fantasmic, or I think, um, like if you're a Disneyland person, like the, the show that they do there, Yeah. the colors, the wonderful world of color or something, like where they, they blast up like a fan-shaped, um, like, psh, and then they yeah. They've been to Disneyland. do onto it. It's on the um, list. But, yeah, neither have I. But um, I know it's the same kind of thing. Yep. So, um, so that's that's the show. That's what the show consists of. Yep. Pyrotechnics, screens, lasers, water fountains, and music mm -hmm. to bring us all together through the song. Through song. Okay. Um, now, as again, I'm following a list here. So, harmonious as advertised. What exactly is harmonious as advertised? Yeah, so we kind of, we, you know, we broke it down. So what, what is it as advertised? So as advertised, it's five permanent barges in the middle of World Showcase. And These if you, barges do not move. And if you love the view of World Showcase as you walk into it, it's, it's destroyed, it's gone. literally. Um, they also promised daytime fountains. Okay, Lies. so this is... This is one that I, from the very beginning, have been like, there's no possible way. Um, None of water in that lake. Not enough, yeah, there's a lot of problems. So, like I said, it looks really, really industrial. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> These barges, they're black. Even the metal parts, they're black. So it's not like it's painted like no sea and blue. Mm, yeah, no whatever. sea and blue. Like, yeah. it, is, it is painted black. And it's like, and it's like light absorbing black. Yeah. Like it is. It's not even definitive. like chrome. Like if it was like chrome, maybe it wouldn't seem so bad. <sighs> not good. But anyways. okay. So anyway, I mentioned this because they said that they were going to have daytime fountains, and that these fountains, by some miracle, were going to cover the barges, make it just look like in the middle of World Showcase there was this glorious fountain. And this has kind of been the thing from the very beginning, where I'm like. I don't think that's possible. Like, I just don't think that that's possible based on the testing that I saw. Mm -hmm. um, and it turns out that they never did it. They never, they never had fountains. The alternative to the fountains is they're just putting like little movies up on the screen, which it's just water. <laughs> which look like water ripples. So like almost like it's like a mirror of reflecting supposed, the water. Yeah, as though it's like an image of the water. It's it is something else. It's how about this? I would say it's probably better than putting up the fountains because it's let's, probably closer. Yeah, but that doesn't change the fact that the center barge has nothing. Like during the oh day, yeah, the center barge the is center there. Barge is just there. Yeah. <laughs> um. Donna says, I saw them in your other video. It is ugly. Yeah, I have a bunch of videos up yeah. where we look at kind of, I have a few different ones, um, where we look at these barges from different angles and everything like that. And um, just bad. there's just no hiding it. Like, I'm not trying to be grumpy. I know there are a lot of people out there who are, like, grumpy about. <laughs> I think the biggest thing, you destroyed the view of World Showcase. Yeah, it's gone. It, it's it not, definitely it's is done. not there. Um, and then, of course, it was supposed to be the show at nighttime. Yep. So, um, we did get the show. Eventually, we got the show. Eventually. Um, okay, so, <laughs> the show um, debuted October 1st. For the 50th. For the 50th. Yep. And it takes, it, again, you should go watch it if you are interested. Um, but there's like an introduction, like a, like a, an awakening, if you will, mm -hmm. of these barges. Um, and then there's like the bulk of the show that goes over a number of different songs. I do think that it's pretty cool because they have these songs that like start off 
Well, it depends. It, it gets lazy there in the middle. We'll get more into it here in a second. But, like, they have the song that goes in English that most of us are familiar with. And then it, like, turns into the native language that um, the movie takes place in. Right. So, for example, we have, um, like, Aladdin comes up and they start singing it in English. Then all of a sudden it's in whatever language that happens to be the movie happens to be taking place in, which look, I looked this stuff up. Aladdin has quite the background. What do you mean? Aladdin, the original story of Aladdin uh -huh. is said to have started in China, but it could be. So obviously, um, the song is called Arabian nights. So you would assume that we have a place where we would point to mm -hmm. the movie being taking place. Correct. But like Agrabah doesn't exist. It's not a real place. It could be India. Right. Because the buildings were, uh, kind of resemble okay. the Taj Mahal. But most people consider it the Middle East. Because... What does Disney consider it? It's a great question. I couldn't find that. We're going to talk more about this in one of our future videos where we okay. talk about intellectual property at Disney and like whether or not like having Disney characters there makes sense. Right. Um, so I kind of looked into this because I was like, you know, Aladdin shows up in Morocco. And I'm like, does that make sense? Mm, I, I guess this based is, on what you're saying, it could. It could. Um, this is why when you looked at my computer, you grabbed my computer the other day and it was like, all these places pulled up. Did you notice that? Yeah. It was like, Mor <laughs> Morocco, where's that on the map? You know, like all these places. Um, <laughs> turns out they're not near each other. No. <laughs> so, no, not even close. Um, but <laughs> then they have like the Hunchback of Notre Dame, and then they start singing in French. Yeah. Or um, my favorite is Hercules, the Hercules number, because they, yeah. they have like this amazing... Um, I mean, all the artists who sang were amazing, yeah. but this guy had, like, the voice. Yeah, he had, he had a set of pipes on him. the voice. Um, and then it ends very abruptly. <laughs> With a literal good night. Yeah, and I feel like, so, there's not much to say about the show, so we're really not going to go more into, like, the details of what exactly happened, but right. I feel like, the fact that the show ended the way it did is kind of like a perfect representation of how they weren't sure that the ending was solid. And so they were like, no, no, we can't just end it. We have to have them say good night. Which makes no sense, though, because if you are actually physically in the park and after the show, it starts back up again. Like 20 yeah, minutes the, later. Okay. Because that wasn't part of the live. Yeah. When they debuted it. Yeah. Um, and we'll get into that. So, anyway. So that's kind of what happens. Like, it just ends. And it ends yeah. with a weird song. No. A riddle. A riddle. I, I'm going with riddle. Um, uh, so. Some odd dialogue and then good night. And then literally. <laughs> poof. So. Real quick, what are your thoughts on the show based on the video? Which one? The, like, Yours? No, 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 no. I know mine is different from the video that actually, like, the actual show. But, like, what are your thoughts based on the actual show video that we've linked for everyone here today? Okay, so, first and foremost, the technology behind the barges and their clear use of the technology. Phenomenal. I don't think that there is any denying that Disney did an amazing job thinking up the show's execution. I feel, okay, <laughs> so I think my, uh, when, I, when I think about it. Specifically meaning the barges. And correct me if I'm wrong on the term, uh, I feel like the Imagineers actually got a blue sky project done. Like, I feel like they were able to get their screens, they got their LEDs, they got their water, they got their pyro, yeah. they so got their ar articulating arms, and then not only did that, 
all of the things I want to do are also on the arms. Yeah, so to, to clarify what exactly he's saying is like, like blue sky ideas or blue sky products or like pie in the sky um, projects, like things that you like, like this is a long shot. Um, I feel like this is an example, yes, yeah. of them being like, okay, so here's what we're going to do. And this shouldn't work for a number of reasons. We're going to put barges out in World Showcase Lagoon, and they're going to look terrible. But it's going to be fine, because during the day, they're going to look amazing. They're going to be right. these amazing fountains. And against everything that any type of engineer or mechanical person knows to be a good choice, because it's a terrible idea, we're going to make sure that they are all surrounded by water, not just in the water, mm -hmm. but like we're going to be pumping water out of them, misting water onto them. Like it's going to be right. electronics and water, which sounds like a bad plan, but like, it's going to be so cool. You know, like yeah. I feel like it, exactly, that's exactly what it was. Like they came up with this great idea. It's larger than life. I think they called it like the biggest show they've ever done. I would agree with that. And that's absolutely, like, yeah. I was outside of, like... It's massive. Yeah, outside of, like, the dragon in Fantasmic. That's not real. Huh? The dragon in Fantasmic is, like, not... It's like a head with garbage bags. It's not, like, a... Real. I know you haven't seen it in I forever. I haven't seen it in forever. The last time we just got the arms, but... Yeah, you know, um, that's true. Yeah, we had we got B-mode. We got B-mode. We got B-mode. On Phantasmic, and it's, like, yeah. it's Maleficent just standing on a ledge. Flailing in her arms. arms the entire time. Ah! Um, um, anyway. Okay, so, um, so that part of the show, absolutely phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely beautiful. Um... The music, I, as you may already come to this conclusion, I'm not a big fan of Disney music at Epcot. I like either one original music completely or Epcot specific music. Um, mm -hmm. That's why I really loved Epcot Forever, even though I wasn't there for the old songs. I still, I know of them and I know what they represented. Um, and then same thing with Illuminations. It was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That brings people together. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like th I can take on the world with that, that score. Uh, it, score. You know what I mean? Like, it's a score. You know what I mean? Like, this was literally just someone cutting and pasting and tick-tocking together some music from VHS tapes. I, so... It's so frustrating. So the big problem that I have with Harmonious, so I I agree. I think the Harmonious is, it's such like a, it's such like a weird thing to talk about because on one hand, I think it's an absolutely phenomenal show. Um, for a number of reasons, I think that the use of the barges is amazing. In specific moments where you can see its full potential mm -hmm. and capabilities and like, it... Okay, so we'll get more into where you're going with this sure. in a second. But like the actual use of the barges, the concept itself is phenomenal. Um, the way that they move and the way that they do what they do is phenomenal. Like there's no way around that. Um the way that they use some of like the cannons that they shoot out at the end are breathtaking. And there's another moment where the, the arms like spit out fireworks and that's breathtaking too. Yeah. And on top of that, they also included, if you, I, I don't remember what show they're using in particular. I think it's Epcot Forever. This wasn't an Illuminations thing. Yeah, it was. I'm sorry. It was Illuminations things where they used the can the original cannons that are actually on land around World Showcase. Mm -hmm. And they incorporated those into the show where it's almost like the country's reaching out together to become one at the center Stargate. And, uh -huh. uh, yeah. But you know what I mean? Like that, there's a representation yeah. there and it's, Amazing. I think you really... Where I think where they really lose both of us is the music choice and the way that they did it. There's two. I'm sorry. So, okay. the music choice 
the way that they did it. And this is the third and most important thing that absolutely bothers me. And I'm, I would really hope that everyone else is bothered by this. The proper viewing of the show. Oh. We haven't even gotten there yet. But they are permanent barges. The ring is stuck in a permanent location and... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, shoot. I can't think of it, but it is where it is facing whatever direction, north, south, east or west or whatever. Yeah. It is in that location, period. So unless you are in fact in front of or behind that screen and then World Showcase, you can't see the water screen if you're on the sides of it. Yeah, so there are, of course, it's like, whatever, a mile and a half or whatever around World Showcase. Right. And when you think about, so there are two places that you get, um, because, I'm sorry, hold on. Let me take a step back. The nature of Harmonious, when you have um, the ring in the middle, is that there are two places around World Showcase that you could conceivably see straight through the ring because think about it like a like a pizza you know what i mean like you can see the front of the pizza you can see the back of the pizza but if you want to see what's on the pizza looking at it from the side isn't really useful all you get is crust all you get is crust or taco barges yeah but even the taco barges like we'll get there in a second sure i know we've been saying a lot of we'll get there in a second but there's a lot to cover mm -hmm. so like so to get a shot straight through the barge, the center barge, you either have to be standing right at the water by, um, like, coming out of Future World, walking straight down that path um, to right look directly at the American Adventure. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or... The opposite of that, you can't get a straight shot through the barge because it's the amphitheater that's outside the American Adventure. Okay. And that brings up some another point that we'll so talk there about. Are two, there are two straight shots, yeah. conceivably, that you can get through the barge. Only one of them can you actually get. Unless there happens to be special events happening like there is during the holiday season. And now... Not even just during the holiday season, clearly all the time. Yeah. And we'll get so there. So the special event specifically for the holiday season is they're doing like Joyful, I think is the name of the show. And they have, um, this is what they do every year, but this year in particular, it's notable because of Harmonious. So what they did is they set up a, a stage basically in that prime viewing area to be able to see Harmonious. So now... If you stand in front of the stage, which you could conceivably do, you can see the center barge, mm -hmm. but you can't see the taco barges along either side. Right. Or you have to stand off to the side of the stage because they've blocked off the whole railing. Mm -hmm. um, so that entire area, that whole center area, that would be like prime viewing. The place that the person who is filming that video I linked below is standing that is not accessible right now during the holiday season. And that's not the only area that's not accessible. Right. As many of you know, Disney weddings have been very popular, especially with the Disney Plus um, new television show. And unfortunately, I know fortunately for them because they, you know what, not even fortunately for them because these poor people are paying for this great experience and it's not even a good view. But anyway, um, I would agree. There are different little seating areas that are now continuously blocked off for private parties. Yep. So um, these used to be areas that you could kind of like go and squeeze into to see illuminations or whatever and kind of get right up on the water. Now you can't do that anymore because there's always some sort of private party happening over there. Now granted, it's not the best place to see them. But my, the reason I bring it up at all is because that's another place that you cannot see the show that you once could see the show. Right. 
Um, now you can see it from elsewhere, of course, but your options are, I don't know, they, they feel somewhat limited with this show. Of course, Russ mentioned the taco barges, and you can see the taco barges from four locations, mm -hmm. but not really. Because yeah, you still get an obstructed view so of the World barge. Showcase, World Showcase Lagoon is very long. Mm -hmm. It's not like necessarily a circle. So again, unless you can get like right in front of the American Adventure or right in front of the... It's between the two gift shops, mm -hmm. the Ports of Entry gift shops. Um, unless you can get right there... You start having some trouble. You start having some trouble seeing those. Now, it's, I mean, it's... It's kind of fine because it's still fireworks if you want to see the fireworks just for the sake of the fireworks. Right. And you can still see the water spraying from the fountains and stuff. Like, yep. you can. But it's not the, like, circular show that it once was with Illuminations, Reflections of Earth. No. It's definitely changed. So. And that bothers me. Yeah, you know, honestly, it bothers me, too, because it's so glorious. Like, Everyone should be able to enjoy that show no matter where they're standing. Mm -hmm. You should not have to, like, obviously, like, some people want to, like, sit down and get a spot on Main Street for the fireworks. Yeah. But you still have a good, like, no matter where you're standing in that. I'm coming soon on that, by the way, <laughs> how there are multiple places to watch the fireworks. And yeah. It's a good show. Um, you know, and then same thing with, like, a parade. You can still see a parade and enjoy the parade pretty much anywhere on the route. Yeah. You're okay. Now, but your view gets obstructed by just the fact of technology decision making. Yeah. Not because just, not that. that's not okay. That that bothers me. Yeah. Um, what about you? I just don't like the idea that I I don't like the idea that such a show. I, I don't like the permanent part. I don't like the permanent part. Um, there was no saving that. You talking about the barges themselves? Yeah. Yeah, they should be submerging into the water. Well, they should they go down. Like, I, that makes well, sense. But well, like, yeah, it does. I mean, this stuff, this submarines and crap. Yeah, but the, the water's not that deep. But it could it's be. Not six stories. Deep you down could. There. They have a stretching room. <laughs> okay, you can go down or put some wheels on it. Put it on a boat. I will, I, it I, is I, labeled as a barge. I feel like, so my opinion of this is um, that they, they reached too far. Um, I think that a they... A barge too far? They a barge too far. Um, I think that they <gasps> like had this really great idea where they were like, oh, this is going to be really cool. But... It seems to me, and I don't want to, I don't want to like talk negatively about whoever it was who like greenlit this project or the Imagineers who came up with it because there's a lot of things to credit them for. Um, Absolutely phenomenal job. But, but to me, this feels like something that they put in place being someone who was like, I don't know anything about Epcot and I've never been there before. Mm -hmm. Because as someone who like enjoys Epcot and someone who is very passionate about travel and, and seeing the world and and the the message kind of of Epcot. As and this show walk, is that message. Yeah, like as it was walk, supposed to be that message, I feel like. As you walk through the the <clears throat> future world into the area where you're looking out at the world, like essentially, you're looking across World Showcase Lagoon, you're seeing all these countries. Like the concept of being like, oh, I could go anywhere in the world. I can do anything. I can see the world's at my fingertips. Yep. Like, that's what I get when I see Epcot. And I've talked to people, believe it or not, while I was waiting for this show, um, who felt very similarly, where they're like, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I feel about Epcot, too. So to be in a position where you're like, ah, we should put barges and obstruct that view doesn't feel very Epcot to me. And while it's a great idea, it's a great concept. Mm -hmm. I feel like whoever like greenlit the project or was like, yes, Epcot's the place for this, like wasn't thinking about no that. No, and I, it, unfortunately, it shows. Yeah, just where it's at. Um, 
As far as seeing the live show, because like the next little question I wrote down is like, what are your thoughts after seeing the live show? As far as seeing the live show, um, I will say that the show in person certainly was not the same show that you guys saw in the link that I posted below. No, and we definitely double ju we double checked it just before watching this. Yeah. They are too... Well, like I checked it like obsessively. They're not um, musically different, but um, pyrotechnics were different. Uh, the lasers, lack thereof. Um, same thing with the water screen. Mm -hmm. A lot of things were lacking in uh, an hour video. Um, versus the versus the one that is linked below yeah. and it hurts the show well i i saw the show in mid-november mm -hmm. um and it debuted october 1st yeah and there were already things that weren't working properly in the show um not only i know you guys couldn't necessarily tell when you watched my video but so the lasers were like intermittent, like some of them worked, yeah. some of them didn't, mm -hmm. um, and there was a speaker out, so there was no music coming from the right side That's of, not good. The, of where I was standing. So the music was kind of, it felt a little distant, um, but I mean, it, things happen, so whatever. But yeah, you know, Dumbo's not going to go up every time yeah. on the ride. You know what I mean? Things happen. Um, but, but in the, the weeks to follow, as I was continuing to, like, monitor news and everything out of Disney, there have been a lot of reports of people watching Harmonious, and there's no projection on the center screen. And there's no lasers. And the arms aren't moving. And, like, there are things that people have experienced with this show, and it's only just over a month. It, <laughs> or, excuse me, it's December now, so it's two months. Like, the show is just getting rolling. We have a new Yeti. Uh, yeah. At Disney. We have a new Yeti. We're going to get B mode and C mode only. Yeah. And that's, I think. I so. think and they honestly started off right in B mode. With not having the fountains going, that starts it off right in B mode for me. And, you know, I mean, I, I love uh, mechanics and science and stuff like that. And um, both of us do. Um, and we knew this was going to be a... Um, challenge? A challenge right from the get-go. Water is a challenge. Period. It, it corrodes, it breaks, it leaks, it does all the things. And then to add waterproofed electronics on top of that, when you're spraying thousands of PSI of water into the air and having it rain constantly, plus you have the sun beating on it from Florida There's all day long, there are so many factors beating on this attraction. Yeah. It would still show um, equipment. I don't know how you would keep it up. No. And truthfully, we did see, so when you're there, um, the, the barges, I know I mentioned that they have like, like little movies going on the, on the taco barges. They don't run all day. So like when you go in the morning, there may or may not be like a little projection. Right. And then like at some point in the afternoon, they go black and then they stay black until the show. And there's also been people taking photographs and whatnot um, of them working on the barges during the day. That is So they'll have like problem. bulldozers and cranes out there during the day, which frankly, can I just take a side note for a second, like a sidebar and say, Disney, whatever happened to you doing this work when the guests weren't there? I have never before seen Disney working so much in such an like an obtuse way while guests are present. And I understand multiple vloggers are like it's ridiculous. And I understand I understand that it's not always possible. Sure. You have to do some stuff during the day. But jackhammering nonstop every time you're at Epcot. Just because you're simple. behind. Now, I know you have to do some of this stuff at night, too. And, and you can't do, like, jackhammering in the middle of the night. I hear you. I hear you. 
but pulling out like the the mechanic barges or whatever it is so you're mm -hmm. sending a heavy machine you're, sen you're sending another barge, barge out to it thing. with a uh, snorkel lift on it to work on the arms and stuff yeah like that that's crazy that is not that is craziness <sighs> there are channels out there that do this and i would love to see if someone would do this and i i can't do it because i don't have the resources i want to know the cost difference of maintaining lights motors action versus harmonious Huh. That's out of, I, it just dawned on me. I was like, lights, motors, action. I loved it. High maintenance show. Yeah, but you know, I think the difference between lights, motors, action, and this is kind of one of the things about, so lights, motors, action, and um, Fantasmic. So lights, motors, action to me, I don't see that as a high maintenance show. It's expensive. I don't. I know the I, numbers were expensive to maintain that show because. I'm sure, but yeah. what I'm saying though is I don't, it, in the grand scheme of things, what we're talking about is maintaining vehicles. And they are special vehicles, but maintaining vehicles. There are other things that they had to do. So, like, they had, like, breakaway glass and stuff like that. But essentially, we're talking about a theater sure. where stuff happened. All right. So, the thing about that, though, is that it wasn't viewable mm -hmm. by the public. It wasn't a centerpiece of the park. Imagine for a moment, Lights Motors Action was where the infamous Mickey hat was, Sorcerer's hat was. If the that best was thing the ever. Case, if that was the case, we would all be like, I hated that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it ruined a big hidden Mickey. I hated it. <laughs> Very strong opinions. Um, but like, imagine for a second if there was continuous work being happen happening on the castle during the day. Yeah, Where I they mean... Were like, like, right now, what they try... I mean, right now, maybe not so much, but, like, they try to do that stuff at night. They take cranes out and stuff during the evenings. I do not ever remember seeing this stuff. And now it's, like, constantly like just happening during the day, which I... I yeah, of course you loved it. <laughs> of course you did. Um, but here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. So, a perfect example oh, of... Oh, real quick, sorry. But Fantasmic is one that has water. There are pirate lasers, there sure. are lasers, there's all that stuff. But again, with Fantasmic, they could work on it all day long and it wouldn't be a big deal because it was closed off. You couldn't see it. And I was going to... And this is, this is all I was going to add to it was like, when it comes to during the day, most work that you're seeing, for example, at like Magic Kingdom is the fact that the moats were drained. Yeah. But that's it. There weren't people in the trenches laying concrete or like putting down new track for the uh, for the boats or anything like that. Like, yeah, you don't see the, that. It's not the same. It's and it certainly wouldn't have happened before. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm remembering a Disney. It was too long ago. Or even this. Maybe the equipment you bring out is not bright orange and tan and exact opposite colors of the barges like i understand they're obviously rented vehicles or contractor vehicles but would it kill disney would it kill disney to buy a couple snorkel lifts and paint them paint them blue with water on. you worked with the coast guard i'm pretty sure you could do this you know what i mean like i just i find it hard to believe that in the grand scheme of things like yeah. it cost a hundred thousand dollars for them to get a snorkel lift which is probably not how much it costs no <laughs> And a can of rattle can spray paint. Like even. I'm sure that they could pull it. I don't know. Yeah, I, you guys get. I, I realize that in this moment that I'm doing what annoys me that some people do. Like I'm being someone that even annoys me. So if I'm annoying you, I apologize. But I just feel like with certain types of companies, if we have to deal with if it, if you're gonna sit there and be like, well, we're gonna have to work on this all the time. Come up with something. Like, yeah. Don't put something out there that you're gonna have to work on all the time. Unless you're prepared to work on it all the time and not make it mm -hmm. this gross-looking focal point. Right. Let's move on. Okay, moving on. Moving on. Um, so, like I said, I saw the show. There were a lot of things that weren't working. But something I do want to comment on being, like, super positive about Harmonious is that the kids loved Harmonious. They loved the music. I happen to be situated between... Um, three families, like, like really, 
I was right in the middle of three families. I was just, you know, by myself. So I kind of, it was me and the woman alongside me who was also an older woman. Um, not that I'm an older woman, but we were not children. And we were kind of like shooing the kids up in front of us, you know, to let them like have some version what of view? a closer view. Yeah, what view, view you could give them? Um, which is always my po my policy, by the way. Like, I'm always trying to help kids get, you know, like, make way for kids so that they can see. Um, and all of them were, like, dancing and singing, especially the really recognizable music, like Coco, yeah. which is really new. So I know that that's, like... Yep. Um, they were singing um, Princess and the Frog. Like, the newer shows oh my god those kids were all over it they were loving it and that's that, the magic right and that that's honestly, it that's what it's it supposed made to be me feel good yeah. because i'm like oh these kids love this and um even when it broke away from the english the fact that they were like singing over the foreign language sure i loved that i thought that was amazing and that's one of the most amazing things that you, I feel like Disney can do and obviously is doing is you're able to show the, you know, the newer generations that you can experience the world through Disney and we are from everywhere and everyone speaks different languages and you can do that through all these different movies that are coming out that are actually based in real locations around the world except for <laughs> Aladdin. <laughs> But yeah, I but yeah that, you know, I think that is really huge. special. And that's, like I said, when we go into our discussion about intellectual property at Disney, one of the reasons that I am I'm for it, even though I know that sounds like not very Epcot of me, is I think that for a park that is not necessarily geared towards children, there are a lot of great experiences for children. And I think having little things that they can enjoy at the parks is so important to get them involved. I think that's wonderful. I'm all for that. Right. But to be able to be like, we're in China right now. This is China. That's Mulan's home, mm -hmm. China. How cool is that? Even Morocco, I know that like we just talked about Aladdin, but to be like, yeah, Aladdin lives here. I think that's really cool, especially when you have the little kids. I like being like, oh, you know, the beast is from France and we're in France right now. And that's why we're seeing mm -hmm. him. So I think that having these, these, um, Iconic characters. These iconic yeah. Characters. Sorry. And I got excited. <laughs> I feel like having, having this, is a good way to show people that there is, especially children, um, that we're all in this together. Um, like, I I love the idea that, that we can have Coco, and it's like, oh, you like Coco? You like Coco? Well, Coco's from Mexico. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and, and Mexico, oh, you know, tacos are Mexican. And we could have taco. You know what I mean? Or whatever. I know that. Whatever is, it doesn't matter what it is. It, it if it inspires, if it inspires and opens those doors for travel and the world around you, I don't care what you use. Yeah, you know what I mean? And, and I think that's the thing is I love that that is yeah, there. For sure. And you can hear the other languages. I mean, look, I, I can be a sappy mess when I watch shows like this from time to time and hearing the uh, even as even as an adult hearing those languages like I said like I am like I was like shook by that um by the Hercules moment because it just like it's such a beautiful language that I don't get an opportunity to hear mm -hmm. ever and to just be able to hear that and just I'm like oh my god that's it opened up a door. Like it opened up this door of being like, I should, you know, I want to go to Greece. You know, like and, you how know, could you like, not these things like that? Like, and I, you know, I don't know. I just, I, I love that. So I do love that the music, that the kids were into that. Okay, but here's the problem. The one criticism that I, well, I have a lot of criticisms about the music, but we're not going to get into the the nitty gritty with it. Maybe we can never video for that. Yeah, but there was. The end song. Someday. So this song, the whole, you know how I just said, like the kids were like loving this? When the last song came on, 
you can even hear in my video, I didn't put it up, but I did take video of this. You can hear people like stop being excited and start talking like, is it over? Is it over? Like you can hear them saying In the that. song? Like while the song was going? Yes. Ouch. Because, because number one, it's an odd like end. Mm -hmm. But also, it's an odd end, but also the song is a very weird choice. It's a sad so song. if you haven't heard it, it's a, it's a very sad song, in my opinion. Um, and it's a song that was played during the end credits of The Hunchback of Notre Dame. So it was it's not a song from a movie per se. It's a song in the credits from the end credits right. of a movie. And I don't like it. <laughs> She's getting emotional just talking about it right now. Well, here's the thing. The song is like, you know, someday when we're wiser, when things are better, like it's it's not It came out in what, 95? I don't know. You've had 25 years yeah. to become wiser. Yeah, but here's the thing I don't like about it. Yeah. It's very downer. It's a very big downer when we live in the world we're living in right now. You should always end a show on an up. I feel like we should have ended Harmonious yeah. being like, <sighs> we go on. Like, this is, again, I keep talk, talking back about We Go On, which was like the, the end mm -hmm. song for... Um, Illuminations, which was like positive. Yeah. Um, so this song <laughs> did not make me feel positive at all. Sure. And in a world like the one we're living in right now, I just kind of felt like I was like, oh, so someday. Someday. I don't know when, but someday things might get better, you know? And I, I just didn't like that. And now could you imagine if that's the, that's the note you end on? when you're in B or C mode of that show, that's horrible to end on that. It is. It is bad. Um, mm. <laughs> hi. Hi, Mark. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I just don't like the song as the end. And frankly, I know this is going to sound... Well, for some of you who've been listening, this is going to sound like very typical... Um, but I think it's so lazy. I think it was I, very lazy of Disney to use. Are you, are, I think that's on your song. list. It's <laughs> it's lazy of Disney to use a lot of the songs. Yeah, I think to use so, a lot of the music, it's it's lazy. But like to, in particular, in particular, to yeah. End on this, there's no original song. number. There is no original song. Not for one. This. And no. they used Lion King twice. Yeah. <laughs> Which Techn is weird. Technically, almost three times, I think, because I think they used actually two song, two full songs of Lion King. I don't know about that. I can't. And the, they, they did the intro with it. The intro, beautiful. It was awesome. It was a very yeah. cool way to do it. It makes sense it right okay. off the bat. It was okay though because I it's had, an option. Yeah. Here's the well, thing. Well, they though. did use different songs because there was the um, there was the like Africa song. Yeah. Which I'm not. Is that Lion King? I'm not familiar with the Broadway show. Broadway show, um, but I didn't realize there was like a if like this is a song that was like da 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 da, da Africa. Song. Yeah, and um, I I don't understand where that's from. I obviously I get what they're doing, but they didn't have any other song that did that. But you know what I will say, if they would have done that for every like different countries that sure. they use, that would have been cool. Because in this little section, like they had like the continent of Africa that was like made up by different little yeah. images in the middle barge and it was like rotating. It was cool. So I think that would have been really cool to have like the different countries like yep. as a little bit of a tie-in. This is what I mean when I say like the story wasn't there. Like they didn't put a story in. Yeah. It was just like, here's music from Disney Motion Pictures. And 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 of course it's 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 hard to do, um, considering there's only if you're going the route of Disney Disney movies, um, all the countries inside Epcot weren't represented. So no. you know what I mean like maybe you do original scores for the ones that aren't, or I don't know. I 
it's not it's not the worst thing that the, you didn't represent all the countries inside the World Showcase, mm. but it is a little odd that you didn't. I don't know. Yeah. It's neither here nor there. I mean, you can go both ways with it. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I just I just think that it was a little bit lazy. It's a it. it's a good segue. It seems very lazy. And why yeah. does it seem very okay. lazy? So here's why this seemed lazy. And I have are you ready? <sighs> <laughs> this doesn't happen often. Put on your tin foil hat. But when it does, we go deep. So put on your tin foil hat because we're going conspiracy theory. It's I, I I gave her the idea and then she ran with it. Okay, so this is how this happened. <laughs> With a little bit of insight. Russ was like, hey, I would love to know a couple dates for Harmonious, like when, um, you know, like when it was announced or what, I don't even remember what you asked. Yeah, me. I asked for when it was announced, when was it supposed to debut, and I think that was it. I wasn't worried about... And I turned up two pages of stuff. Sorry, we got a little bit of thunder going on outside, so you might hear the dogs bark. Fuzzy mortal, not um, happy. It is... Terrible out here right now. Um, it's about to get rough. It's about to get really rough. Like so, if we lose this, any moment. yeah. Um, Sorry. So anyway, we're gonna kind of brush through this because there's only. I mean, hey, Smokey, say hi to everybody. <laughs> we're gonna brush through this because I don't know how much time we'll have. Um, it's like a historic event over here. Um, so this harmonious was announced in 2019. 2019. Okay. Yep. And it said that they was gonna debut. Hey, bud. They said it was going to debut in spring 2020. Okay, so okay. this was all announced prior to the pandemic. Yes. Okay. Um, September 30th, excuse me, Illuminations got its last show. Yep. October 1st, we got Epcot Forever. That's all 20, uh, 2019. So all that happened in 2019. And then we went in Christmas 2019, and that's when we were able to see the... Um, Oh, what was it? The, like, Epcot experience the Epcot thing experience. where we saw what it was going to be. Yeah, that we included got, a bunch of stuff. Yeah, but, we got a chance to see, like, signs that featured mm -hmm. those daytime fountains that we're all really excited nice about. Nice concept art. Um, so it, we were really excited It for, looked at least okay at the time. Okay, so yep. it was Christmas 2019. Yep. Now, the first day of spring was March 19th. 2020. Of, of 2020. So we're one month and change into the pandemic. But on March 15th, 2020, the parks closed. Okay? So, this is where stuff gets crazy. See, Mark might have missed some of it, but he's, I think he's at the best part. Yeah, I think he, you might have not been here for the beginning part, Mark, but you showed up just in time. Okay, so, um, here's why I'm confused. So, Officially, the last day of spring is June twenty twenty, uh, June twentieth. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was the case in twenty twenty. My, where I'm confused is this. Okay, presumably, Disney would have had something ready for this show prior to the pandemic closures. Now, um I mean, like at least. More than concept art, right? More than concept art, and not only more than concept art, let's remember people, permanent barges were to be used yeah. in this show, or any type of barge, whether it was permanent or not, there was clearly fountains, there was something in the world showcase that should have been used. Right? And there was no visual... There was Go ahead. Yeah, okay. So anyway, so presumably something would have happened. Just laying the foundation for you. Okay. okay. It's all right, Mark. You might be out of tinfoil, but it's it's fine. Saran we'll wrap? Fine. Saran whatever. Wrap works. <laughs> whatever. You have some Mickey ears? Hang on tight. Yeah. Um, so the parks reopened in July of 2020, and obviously things were crazy. Like, we can't... I'm not trying to... Like, discount any of what happened. Of course, we talked about tinfoil hat. This is like conspiracy theory stuff, okay? Yep. And then the first barge is installed in December of 2020. Installed? The first barge is installed. And it's brought start, out and installed. Yeah, and we start getting the tests around December, and it takes until April 2021 for all four barges, um, for additional the additional barges, so all five barges, to be 
installed, which means it took them four months. So here's what I want to know. <laughs> here's what I want to know. Assuming that it took four months because it was like they were lacking staff. <laughs> oh, man, it just goes back. Can you see? He looks like a werewolf. <laughs> scary. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's that's awesome. Other fuzzy mortal. He's a, he looks like he pulled out out of a dumpster. So assuming that it would have taken four months, even under full staffing, you know. So we're going to give a benefit of the doubt. Let's assume that they have less staff. Let's assume all of that. Right? Which the timeline makes sense if you go back to when it was announced that it was coming out. It was like four, like August, and then spring of next year. So yeah. January, February, March, April. You know, what was it was the no, first that's day of spring? A year after. I, I understand a year after. I understand, like, yes. look, you're, you already blew the year out of the mark, but it was in August, and it was supposed to come out in spring, yeah. and spring was supposed to be in March. Yeah, March right? to June. So, like, you know what I mean? Like, September, October, November, December. So, you were relatively close with the four months, plus a little bit of testing. Yeah. But my point is, is this. You were on point. Where I'm coming from is this. is like, if it took this long to install them, shouldn't we have seen, if, they, if the show was, like, remotely close to being ready or whatever shouldn't we have seen something by like december 2019 to march 2020 there should have been a barge like, at least one something <laughs> at least something so then we oh. go even deeper okay <laughs> this is great okay we next go note even, we go even deeper because if you watch the preview videos of the soundtrack of harmonious we learn that they were recording the the music and everything for the show post mask mandates or or like the i shouldn't say mask mandates post um the um normalization of mm -hmm. wearing face coverings right okay yep so my question is this Well, my question, no, this isn't a question. My theory is this, okay? Go ahead. I don't think Disney was ready to debut Harmonious. No. And then they slapped it together, and that's, we got what we got. Mechanically, again, the show itself, they got their barges. In the end, mm -hmm. I feel like they were correct. They did what they were supposed to. They For a little are, while. Again, they are the Swiss army knife that mm -hmm. they're supposed to be. But everything else... Like, the actual show itself, if you compare it to um, Happily Ever After, it looks like stuff that was on the cutting room floor of Happily Ever After, and they were like, quick, let's get that and put it in to the screens of Harmonious and call it good. Um, same music. Yep. Similar type of animation and, and little, um, like, projections and or movies. It's actually kind of weird. If you look it up, if you watch a video of Happily Ever After, it does look strikingly similar. Yeah, it's... The, so my question is why two years plus more than that? Like, you would think that they would have had most of it figured out by the time we saw... Because even when we watched the Epcot experience, there was, like, Aladdin standing in the middle of the thing, and, like, it looked like they had something figured out. And then they didn't have anything. <laughs> I, I, I think they had something. They had something probably amazing. And it got scrapped. I, I think so too. They were like, this is not going to fly. We can't be doing original scores. We don't have the money for this. Well, budget, budget cuts. Budget cuts like crazy. And then, obviously, the pandemic hit. So you definitely aren't getting an orchestra together to actually record any original music. But see, this is the thing. Well, you know, you're right because maybe it got scrapped or budget cuts got ha happened. But like, this but is how well it should have been done well before that. Why this wasn't done beforehand? Like, how is it that it took so long to even well, get the ball rolling at and, all? And that's the thing. You 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 are theater, um, not necessarily theater major, but theater. you have a background in theater and you know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Am I crazy for thinking that? People should have been already in a recording studio the second they debuted it. Just like when you put up a movie poster for a movie coming, either it's, one, the movie's already done, or it's in post-production. Yeah. It's, like, so it's, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how Disney does this, because I, I have a background in theater, but I also have worked in other entertainment production, like big mm -hmm. type of like... Concert venues concert and stuff venues, like that. 
style production. Pretty cool stuff. Um, I have never, never heard of a company mm -hmm. who, like, makes an announcement and a debut date as solid as Disney did, like, in a, in a case like this. Like, n like, no one announces a concert and then starts writing their music. Yeah. Like, they've already worked it out. At least something's been worked out. what it is they're going to need. Or now, like, this was plan B, and it was worked out. Maybe it was. I don't know. But um, it's, it's very interesting to me. And I will say this. I don't know what I'm talking about. We're like, just spitballing. I, I'm just talking here. That's what we do here. We just kind of talk and share our thoughts. So if we are like completely off pace here, I would love to know it. Like if, if you're out there and you're like, I want to send a message and let you know my thoughts because I have experience with this specific thing or whatever. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Like totally leave a comment, send a message, you know, DM us on one of the All places. of it. <laughs> um, and share your thoughts. You know, if I'm, I will happily be corrected. But I have never been... I've never worked on a production that was, like, put together after. Mm -hmm. Like, th things might be, but not like this. Um, Mark says, that's my guess. People important to the project were cut. Perhaps part of the production was co um, contracted, and Disney lost their product as a result of the COVID cuts. That's a really good point. Yeah. That's a... I, um, for sure. And I think I, I think the 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 one hole in the theory is that the, it should have been done well before COVID. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that makes sense. If what what he's saying. Oh, it totally makes, makes sense. sense. It, that yes. makes perfect sense. Is like if it was like in the middle of production and like paperwork didn't get filed or something didn't get done yep. thanks to COVID, and it was like, well, it's been ninety days, and then it gets cut. Like that makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's a very good point. Thanks and for you, thanks for sharing that one because. Yeah. It, that does make sense, but it does it, it still, I, as you said, um, kind of falls under the same thing of like, it feels like they were like, oh no, and put this together. And that's why it's so spectacular in certain areas. You know, like they could have. Certain parts of the show are absolutely here, beautiful. Yeah. And it would have been amazing because there's, like I said, when those arms come out and then they like shoot from the arms there toward the end, it's like it's breathtaking. Even thinking about it, it is breathtaking. And and fireworks will do that. The same thing with those cannons that go off all the way around. Like it is breathtaking. There is no way around that. Mm -hmm. um, but as someone who like knows that Disney can do better, like oh, I mean, I. I wanted to want to see this show every night. I was staying at the Swan, so I knew I could have. Mm -hmm. Like, I could have been there and saw Harmonious every night. And if this was, like, Illuminations or even Epcot Forever, I would have gone out of my way yeah. to see the show every single night. But there was another point, I think, I think the video is already up, where I was like, I could watch Illuminations, but I'm going back because... Or I could watch Harmonious, but I'm going back because, I mean, I don't need that. I don't even need it. Um, which mm -hmm. is sad, you know, I, I feel like Disney is so good at doing that thing where they, they make you feel like you just can't contain your emotions. Yeah. This doesn't do it. Nope. Sadly, but, um. Yeah, very odd. Yeah, that's, it's weird. Um, it's odd. I do think that it's a good show as far as if you want to see fireworks and go and go see some amazing mechanical stuff. It's so cool. Like I would. Love it's Imagineering to see at its it. best. Yeah. I think so. And if I just hope that they can continue to keep it up, I hope that they can continue. My thought is it won't last beyond the eighteen months of the fiftieth celebration. So, do you think um, anyone who would like to go see this show or is like, I need to see new shows and stuff like that? They should go sooner rather than later. If they to if see if, harmonious? if you believe people should see this show, yeah. I think that anytime you go to Disney, it's always in, it's always interesting and exciting to see the new shows, even if they're not like stupendous in your opinion. It's fun to be able to see them. I am. I'll be the first person to say I love Kite Tales. I think it's great. <laughs> like, like go see Kite Tales. You know what I mean? Like yeah. because it's fun to see new things. Yep. Um. If you're not a person who enjoys fireworks, if you're not a person who is into shows, I don't feel like 
I don't feel like I can recommend you going to see this so that you're like, oh, I'm going to be moved. I'm going to be, you know, it's going to rock me to my core or anything like that. It's not what's going to happen here. Yeah. Um, Mark says, the kite company from the previous Epcot show were contracted. I almost feel like we were all subjected to kite tails because they they uh, couldn't cut the contract, so Disney got what they paid for. Kite tails is new, but is it Disney quality? <laughs> That's <laughs> I, I, a good question. And thanks again for that tidbit. It's um, like, it does, but it makes total sense. Great, it does. Yeah. yeah, it's dead on. They, they ha and they had the jet skis. That's one of the things that we've always talked about. We're like, oh, there they. As soon as I watched Kite Tales and I saw that the um, jet ski, well, obviously the jet skis are still in there. But when I watched, um, remember the end of Epcot Forever, like during the end of its run, where they stopped using the jet skis. Yeah. And now they probably stopped using the jet skis for a number of reasons, like. You know, they were transporting them or because of the barges being a problem. They didn't want to fly kites around the, the tacos. But immediately we were like, they're repurposing them. You know I mean? <laughs> there's the kites. Like, there's, there's the jet yeah. skis. And um, now we have these kites. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Kite Tales is new, but is it Disney quality? I don't think that Kite Tales is Disney quality. But it's that, one heck of a show. That I like. But, no. um, or that I believe in, you know, that I think all of us are like, yeah, that's Disney quality. Um, the Kite Tales isn't it. But I think the thing is, is it's like when it comes to recommending people watch a show, mm -hmm. although here's the one thing about Kite Tales or anything else happening in that theater. The big downside to Kite Tales, aside from the obvious of it being like mediocre, except, you know, I mean, it's fun because it's so ridiculous. Right. Um, is it's hot. I would never tell anyone to go out of their way to watch mm -hmm. Kite Tales or anything in that theater because my goodness. Yeah, you said you were, you were having some trouble. I was, it wasn't even a hot day. I can't imagine being in that theater like in the dead of summer. Like, would you just melt? Like, what happens? Well, also, and now here's my, ne here's my next question. Uh, we're going to get a slightly off topic real quick with Kite Tales and Disney quality in particular, yeah. right? Um, what was there before? Rivers of Light. Right? I never saw Rivers of Light. And but here's the thing, nor did I. I never heard anything good about it either. I it seemed to be one of those things that was like a like a not unmentionable. What what would you call it? Like it was like an eh. It was eh, but I'm I'm assuming it was at least Disney quality, like Mark is saying. You know what I mean? Like I don't know, Mark. Did you ever see one of uh, uh, Rivers of Rivers of Light? Um, and if you had. Was that Disney quality? I should probably like look it up. Should watch that video. We should we should yeah. go hunting for it. Um, oh, never. never. <laughs> <laughs> See exactly. So I mean, so then that begs the next question: Is it better to have at least something there that isn't the best of quality, or have nothing at all and then it becomes dead space? I think it's probably better to. Um, Donna says it was terrible. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I feel like it's probably better to have something there versus having nothing. Um, and more specifically, um, like another, another great, like, example of that being, um, Lightning Queen, McQueen Racing Academy, right between, oh, um, Rock and Roller Coaster and... Tower of Terror. Right. While I have not done Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy, and I know I talk a lot of smack about it and it being kind of stupid, um, I really shouldn't because I don't know. But I have always sung praise of them doing that because I do think that it's good to have something for the younger kids mm -hmm. between those big thrill attractions. So it gives, like, you know what I mean? Like, Mom and Timmy can go to Lightning McQueen's yep. while Dad goes on Rock and Roller Coaster. And I sure. feel like that's what maybe Rivers of Light and or Kite Tales is, is like while someone's going on Expedition Everest because it's right there, mm -hmm. or Dinosaur because it's right there, you can send the kids to something and be like, and here it is. Right. And so like Mark is saying here, um, Rivers of Light was the nighttime show and Kite Tales is the daytime show. Right, exactly. So even before Kite Tales... All that was there was Rivers of Light. So during the day, there was nothing there. Right. I, I don't recall anything being there during the day. We spent a lot of time um, out of the United States. So we weren't, like, this is the, like, the gap 
that we yeah, have. this was the gap. <laughs> this like is a ten year gap. Yeah, um, that we have. Um, Rivers of Light is is right in that gap. Yeah. Um, oh, the Lightning McQueen phrasing you had was so <laughs> cute. Donna says. I wanted to do it during my last trip, and the next video is going to be coming out, and I didn't get a chance to because timing was weird, um, just because I wanted to see what it was about. Mm -hmm. But I do think that, like, there is a place for stuff like that. Oh, for sure. Um, um, even though it might not be Disney quality and it might be kind of lame. Uh, there is a comedic value to Kite Tales, though, and even Disney recognizes that now with the yeah, new announcement and stuff. Um, but you can... You can get that show with food if you are at Flame Tree Barbecue. There is viewing from the Flame yeah, Tree Barbecue right. from the seating area over there, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, is harmonious Disney quality? I don't think so. See, the, the problem it's half. That I have with that, is, and this is like, like kind of as it rounds back out, like the problem that I have is that like there are certain things that are absolutely Disney quality. And I also think that as, as people who enjoy Disney, we have to be real with ourselves. Disney always, like, there are times where Disney under-promises and we get something spectacular. Mm -hmm. But there are times where Disney over-promises and we get something that's, you know, Disco Yeti. And, and, so, yeah. we have to, like, we have to remember that, like, this is kind of what you come to expect with Disney. The only thing is, I feel like being such a centerpiece is what makes it the problem. Well, so, and that's the thing, I think we're, we're about to see that happen with the Galactic Star Cruiser. So we'll see what happens there. And I think that's going to be the next, you know, is it Disney quality or not? Um, and I think I'm going to play devil's advocate a little bit as, you know, the pandemic hit and you got to save money. You know, whether or not, you know, when we break down the timeline, whether or not we are right or not, COVID, you know, definitely hit. And whether or not that show was ready, things were cut. Yeah. Period. Mm. So, unfortunately, that's where it ended. I'm, I'm, what I'm hoping for is that because, and again, I know, like, optimism strikes again. But what I'm hoping for is that maybe after the 50th or at some point, because, um, you know, the 50th is going on for 18 months. Yep. Um, or maybe at some point we have like Har Harmonious 2.0. Mm -hmm. So not just, you know, for those of you who aren't familiar, there was Illuminations and there was Illuminations Reflections of Earth. So I would love to see like Harmonious Reflections of whatever. Sure. You know what I mean? Like I would love to see kind of, not an overlay, but a revamp would be great. Mark says, when I was a kid, I pulled a balsa wood plane behind me as I ran and imagined it was a kite. It was not a kite, and neither are the Kite Tales Parade balloons. Yes. Um, totally I don't right. know if you're, like, if you're privy to this or if you, like, you happen to see this, but over on TikTok, and maybe it showed up on Facebook or elsewhere, there were these two girls who absolutely killed dressing up as Kite Tales. Um, yeah, in Magic, Magic King. Kingdom. I think it was for the Halloween party, but they dressed up as Kite Tales, and they were, like, pulling each other behind each other, and then just falling to the ground in the hub it was yeah. the best thing yeah. <laughs> i don't know i just got images. but no it, it really 100 percent right i can't disagree with that yeah. at all you know unfortunately it is what it is i think we like it because things are in such a rough place i like i like kite tails and I, I unapologetically like kite tails because it's quirky and it was the first show that i had seen during my trip where people were like gasping and going whoa like having the kites fun took off you know the kites when they took <laughs> off people were like whoa and then yeah. when they crashed like, oh and it was the first time i heard that <laughs> all trip so it was fun <laughs> yeah. so you know i think it's unfortunately it, it's what we have yeah. and so we'll, so, have to see we'll, have to see. we'll have to see what we get um i do hope that it works out Yep. And um, I don't know. I'd love to know what you guys think. Would, do you think that it'll change? I think it has to change over time. Yeah. So, oh. but yeah. Um, let's see. We got one more comment that came in, and I think we're gonna go ahead and and start wrapping this one up. Um, is it, the comments are a little bit slower yeah, it's coming. here. Um, what's with the strange orange kite? <laughs> The strange orange kite. Well, I think that's uh, um, well, that's Baloo. No, no, that's not Baloo. That's Baloo. King Louie. King Louie, and just 
Yeah, he's, he's weird. You know, they I really aren't. wanted to see, um, and I didn't get a chance to, I really wanted to see the Timon and Pumbaa. Because Timon's like flapping in the yeah, breeze. Yeah, yeah, cause it, yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's Simba, Timon, Pumbaa, uh, Blue, yeah, King Louie. Yeah, see, there's like five of them. And I think um, the the bird too, right? Uh, what's the cheapest crow? Why am I blanking I on his name? I think he's Iago. No, well, that's no, a list. Iago. <laughs> Zazu. Zazu. Yeah, I think Zazu's oh, one too. Um, but it's all, you know. No, the oh, citrus, citrus orange. orange. Oh, that's right. The, the, it's, it's, okay. That's when, uh, that's the prickly. Um, oh, the prickly pear. Yeah, the prickly pear that, that blue ma that the citrus grabs. Orange. No, you didn't. But there, that is, uh, that is part of it. That's the, the fruit that uh, blue eats from the jungle yeah, book. Yeah, the prickly pear. Yeah. Um, and he's just, uh, yeah, I remember that scene. He's like, boop, boop, boop. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I didn't see that one. That's disappointing because I would have definitely taken a picture of that. <laughs> now that I think about it, I did see it. It is, a, it is an auto, unless you know what yeah. that is. It's just like, Weird, what right? is that? Yeah, I don't know. It's abstract it's art like, in the like, middle of a show. More kite. Yeah. <laughs> we what got some extra do, material what do we from do Simba. Louis gets a hole, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Patch them together with Simba yeah. and <laughs> King Louis. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so. Um, but yeah, we'd love to know what you guys have to say about <laughs> about Harmonious and what you're hoping to see. You know, did you like it? Did you not like it? If you haven't seen it yet, I would love if you would go check the link down below and check out that video and mm -hmm. then come back and share your thoughts. Um, that video is probably the best video I've ever seen of Harmonious. It's they do phenomenal really well. quality. And that's why I, that's why I linked it. Um, I, you know, there were things that I'm not doing. And one of them is, is capturing... Extremely high quality night... Extremely high quality night, <laughs> night show. Yeah, there are other things that I'm, I'm focused on. Um, Donna says she loves oh, your shirt. I, I love the shirt too. Um, it's, like, hey, hey. I'm going through Disney like hey hey right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's where we're at. And I yeah. think uh, Mark hits the nail on the head. It's, you know, Kite Tales was the Disney quality. Are we going to see Disney swing the pendulum back in the opposite direction and start cleaning things so. up. I hope so. Fingers are crossed, so aren't the toes, and uh, yeah. that's where we're at. But that is it for today. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed having this discussion. We definitely enjoyed talking to you guys, and we're looking forward to seeing you for our next one. Um, let me double check on what that next one's going to be real quick so that we can... Um, we can let you know yeah because these uh, these conversations are a lot of fun and we definitely um i love the comments thank you so much yes. for actually engaging with us it's it's really fun for us um and we get to you know actually share some serious conversations at times yeah. and i think that this you know it's great to make videos and and have like you know have like solid information out there like i like doing that but um it's also really great to just have the conversation and talk about it like this too, which is why we're doing it. And so our next conversation, ooh, this is gonna be a good one. Um, we are going to talk about whether or not Walt Disney World hotels are worth staying at. Holy is staying on property holy. worth it? Yeah, um, we'll... <sighs> I thought the Galactic Star Cruiser live was a rough one because we were all over the place. This is going to be ridiculous. We're going to have to like sit down and organize our thoughts for this one. Seriously. I, and all of you at home uh, watching this and knowing that it's coming, if you like, subscribe, and uh, get the notifications, you'll know it's coming too. And you can prepare some of your thoughts. Yeah. And bring them to the table with us because... For sure. We got all the time in yeah. the world. <laughs> I'll, I'll, we'll stay live for hours for all I yeah, care. I don't even lot mind. Yeah, to talk about. So, yep. Um, well, we are looking forward to having you there and join us. Yep, appreciate it, Mark, so. Donna, both of you. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. So thanks for joining us, guys, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.